Okay. Judging by the numbers I've seen, that should hopefully keep it completely reliable. Are we good? Seems like it. Okay. Uh, so... New stream who dis? Indeed. Got 0.0% dropped frames and a nice green light now. Certainly hope this isn't going to become the new normal. But I guess Factorio in 30 is worse than Factorio with buffering, right? Um, okay, so... How have we not made these... Oh, there we go. Wait, what? I think I should probably set the prerequisites so that we... Oh, that's right. I remember thinking about this before. I kind of want latch behavior for the targets for each of these, because... Uh, because it's going to make like a train stop as a prerequisite and then it's going to take a train stop to make an, a logistic train stop and then we're not going to have the maximum uh, the target number of train stops and then the recipes are going to change again and so on and so on although there is a bit of sticky behavior just because the crafting combinators don't respond that quickly um, but yeah, it definitely slows things down quite a bit, the way we're switching recipes here. Um, I would give this a bunch of st there we go. Oh, nope. I'm trying to speed up one of these so that it can just... There we go. Maybe I could just add some circuitry here so that somehow whatever signal is being passed through all of these doesn't change for like five seconds or something. Or maybe even set it to just stick every 20 seconds or something. I would have to add, like, a memory cell. I don't really want to have to do that, but on the other hand, the way this changes back and forth is not that great. Alright, so now we're actually down to just the electromagnetic facility, and I was going to say nothing else, and then it flicked back over to make some arithmetic combinators for some reason. Uh, let's add cargo landing pad, and we need like, well, we need four of them. If we're going to be able to make one of these blocks uh, at any given time. That bumps it back to needing to make steel chests, at least the steel stays here. Um, we don't have any radars being produced up here. Let's fix that, shall we? Where am I going to put them? 50 radars. Seems like radars are a lower priority on the signal list than both of these, and so they're just never going to get made. I should be carrying 50 radars. Where are they? I am not carrying any radars. Okay. Still no work? Uh, location is Brisbane, which had got hit pretty badly in some places by the flooding. So... 
Wait, what? It still says I've got zero dropped frames since I restarted the stream. That's weird. Uh, let me have a look. Which... Seems to be working. Yeah, I can see the stream on Twitch just fine. Although, obviously, if there's any intermittent issues, I'm not going to see it at a glance. Okay. Uh, let's see. What else was I doing? That's right, we need radars to make this work. Uh, four radars. Wait, how many? Ten radars. Jeez. It's a bit expensive. I guess that kind of helps in a way, actually, because if we... Autocraft a bunch of radars, as long as we've got more than enough to make the cargo landing pads uh, when the time comes. And then it won't have any problems. Where are our stone bricks? Did I not request them over here? I definitely did. What about here? Stone brick. 4k. Do we not have them in the rail network? Why is this train stuck? And why... Oh no. Uh, that's... That's not what I'm looking for. I thought I fixed this already. Uh, blacklist. White. List. That one was blacklisted, that's weird. But it doesn't... Oh, that was... No, that inserter was probably the problem. That would have been why we ended up with not blue circuits on this belt. What have we got? I don't see any more... No, it's just up here that we've got a bunch of... Um... Uh, rocket, cargo rocket sections. Anyway, I was looking for concrete. I, th I do believe we put that in. Yeah, here it is, concrete. We do have that in the rail network. Are we just asking for too many things right now? Oh, that would probably help. Oh, concrete. Yeah, if we actually request the concrete uh, from the rail network, it might help. No path. I'll help you first. Get off of my belt. That should do it. I'm surprised I'm not running out of inventory space already. Seeing any more strange item? Oh, there we go. 
Kind of lucky that this train had no path, or it would have taken longer to find that problem. And that would be why the train has no path. This is not supposed to go this way. Um, would it be easier, though? This is easier. I wonder how that got disconnected. Or did I just never put it here in the first place? Um, so that goes there, that goes there. Cool. And this signal is now confused. Back to base. I just caught myself referring this to base. It's starting to feel like it. Fantastic. Welcome back, t Hex. Hope you're well. A hey, robust. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And, uh, thanks for the welcome back. Wasn't it stone bricks you wanted, not concrete? Possibly. Well, I definitely need concrete as well. We do have a request for stone bricks already, though. But I wonder why they're not reaching... Uh, this is looking a bit full. But also, apparently, we have no stone bricks in this entire block. Which is a little bit surprising to me, considering... We set that request a while ago. I think I remember it was accidentally positive, but I fixed that a while ago. Uh, let's see. Oh. It would probably help if we were sending up stone bricks. Yeah, that, that might, that might help a little bit. Okay, um, can we get at least one... Do we not have an... Uh, shouldn't we have like a thousand logistic bots here if we need them? 82. Oh, I see what... I've never actually seen this happen before. Uh, it's wanting to put I, I left this as whitelist, that's the problem. Okay. So, it's going to only put in the bots that we need, as opposed to randomly put... This should be like 1,200 each. It's 2.4k is the maximum that we can fit here, isn't it? 48 times 50. Yeah. Okay. Let's, uh... Let's make a bit more room for the construction bots. Now we've got some logistic bots. Fantastic. Of course, always a pleasure to have you on the background while I've run around in the morning. Nice, thank you. Okay. Uh, I seem to be requesting a lot of logistic train stops these days. That doesn't necessarily need to be the case. Also waiting for the cargo rocket sections to get taken away still. Uh, can we use a stack filter inserter for this? No, no we can't. I can't remember what it was, but there was some use case where there would potentially be two filters, but it would be okay to use a stack filter inserter, but I can't remember what it was. So for now, we're just going to be bottlenecked on 
two robots per swing. I'm sure that'll be fine in the long run. Okay then. Um, I forgot even what we were trying to do here right now. Apparently it's make a lot of bots all of a sudden. We still don't have the accumulators. We also need the stone bricks. Uh, I need a cargo landing pad. What can we do? Concrete and steel is all we need to be able to handcraft. Fantastic. Let's do it again. That was a lot easier, sort of. I mean, obviously, once I get this working properly in the long run, it'll be better to have them automated. So we're looking for stone brick and uh, what was it? Con it wasn't concrete. Uh, stone brick and something else. Accumulators. We'll get stone bricks first. Uh, but first, I would like to. This is already set up correctly, I think. I'll change this to fish, that'll be our template. Um, this should be a requester color. What color did I use for that? I'll just call this bot and repair pack requester. Nice. And while we're at it, update that one. Now then. I'm going to change all of these to fish. And fish. And blacklist fish goes to the trash pickup. Put in a cargo landing pad with default name. Uh, this one doesn't need a filter. This is trash pickup. This is fine. That should be that. So that goes for all four of these. To the exception, oh, we don't need that extra bit of uh, rail sticking out, though. Uh, the only exception to this radially symmetrical build is the drop-off for the robots. Okay, so we should now be able to blueprint this. I'll just call it... I don't know what to call it exactly. I guess we'll include the tiles. Space block. That's. That goes in SpaceX. Fantastic. We've got our template now. And we can start setting this up. Stone brick. Whoops. Stone brick and station name. 
stone brick provider. And we rename this to Nervous Albert Stone Brick. If we've already got a cargo rocket for such a thing, it'll be on its way, but I don't think we do. That's concrete. But yeah, I'm pretty sure we don't have one yet. So let's do that here, I suppose. Stone brick. Stone brick requester. And a full cargo rocket is 50k. And then. This one is aimed at Nervous Orbit Stone Brick. Launch on cargo full. And that should be all it takes. Fantastic. Next is accumulators. Now oh, let's uh Let's add our tag here as well, before we forget. Stone brick. Accumulator. Accumulator. Provider. Let's use the nav set, it's a little bit easier. And this one has blacklist on it. Also, this needs to be accumulator. That should be everything. This doesn't change. Oh, uh, and we actually need to set up a rocket for that as well. Actually, I'm a little surprised if we've got one for solar panels, but not accumulators. I think we had solar panels being launched, yeah, from here. That's slowly going to run out, intentionally. Uh, we do have 154,000 solar panels there, though. Um, just because I'd like to keep them together... Was this one stone brick? I think I'll put... Uh... I'll put solar panels and accumulators here. But I won't, um, I won't set this one to launch until we're done with the other rocket. Uh, so let's see. Now this orbit solar panel. Fantastic. And here come our stone bricks. Perfect. I don't think I've made... I, I don't think I've named a uh, cargo landing pad for accumulators yet. So is it this one? Yep. Accumulator... Uh, 25,000 will be a full rocket. Wait a sec. No, that one... Wait, 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 wait. I wanted that one to be solar panels, I think. Yeah. 
Uh, why don't we... No. No. Bad. I definitely turned off that combinator. Yeah, so that... That train delivery got scheduled, like, 12 seconds after I turned off the constant combinator for it. It's a little bit odd. Alright, let's change this one to solar panels. And same numbers, since the stack size is the same. Did that train go back to... We shouldn't still be seeing a yellow light on this if the train got back to the depot already. I might just get construction spiders to pay that a visit, deconstruct it, and place it again. Just to be sure. Nope, never mind, the light went green again. So it should be quite soon that we see accumulators and solar panels being delivered. Oh, unless of course I forget to turn this back on. That uh, should do it. Fantastic. Nervous Orbit Green Science, that needs to change. Uh, is this... this is accumulators, isn't it? Yep. Nervous Orbit... Accumulator. And... Nervous Orbit... Accumulator, launch on cargo full. Nervous Orbit solar panel, manual launch. Should be fine. We're still only about a fifth full on the stone brick rocket, uh, but it is on the way. So that should be that. Is there anything else? I don't think so. Um, we've got everything in place that if we just wait a while, we should get all of the stuff we want over here. Although I do want to get a whole lot of radars built before we try to build the cargo landing pads. I could always have a bunch of rules in place, like have a decider combinator check if we have 50 radars before we try to make a cargo landing pad. But once I start doing things like that, I shudder to think of how many combinators we're going to end up needing. If I want the target to be anything but one for the cargo landing pad or something, uh, then we need two combinators per item. Whoops. For example, yeah, if... And that would be if you're only checking one of the dependencies. So we could say, if radar greater than or equal to 50, uh, from here, output one cargo landing pad where we put the requests. But that would ignore electronic circuits, small electric motors, stone bricks. I would really like to set up some kind of universal system I guess it would involve using a recipe combinator. We could find ingredients 
And then... If we have all of those ingredients... Which, in itself, is a... I'm not sure how to do that. But let's suppose we can do that. Find ingredients, check if we have X amount of each ingredient. But then we also need some kind of latch behavior so that the moment we take, like, one iron plate away or something, uh, it doesn't then say, wait, we don't have that much iron plate. Uh, yeah, that gets... That gets a little bit complicated. Is there somewhere a mod list? Indeed. HP Crusher. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, so, Stone Brick. We're still... I'm actually surprised how long it takes to load one of these things. I guess when the stack size is 100, that's like... Uh... Well, it's 100 times 500 divided by 10. Uh, 5,000 swings of these stack inserters. And they are not going at 864 degrees per second because they're picking up from a belt. So that does take a little while to fill up. But I need the stone brick now. Uh, I've got some stone here. I've got a surprising amount of stone here. I can't put furnaces here, actually. Uh, there was something that we can use for furnaces. I don't remember which one it was. It must be thermodynamics facility because it comes after all of the furnaces. Uh, I definitely don't have any of those on me, though. It is the kind of thing that we should be adding to our list. About ten of those and see how that looks. Okay. Um, but first, let's check on... Spiders, I think they've gone home. Fantastic. That was easy to find the leaders. Alright, I'll get you to follow this one this time. And we'll send them down to do their thing. It's probably fine to just keep them as one big group, right? Maybe. I'm sure it wouldn't be as effective as if I split them up and blank the uh, nests, but... In terms of the value of having to spend a moment queuing up these orders, it's definitely higher value that way, as long as they survive. Which they will. The spiders at the back aren't going to do nearly as much uh, launching of rockets, uh, except perhaps at, for example, big groups of biters running at the group. Until the ammo gets a bit lower on the front group anyway. Uh, but yeah, that is... Uh, we could probably do one more. I think that should be pretty safe. 
probably didn't have to go back that way, actually. And back to base. They're already looking a little more stretched out than I would like, but they'll probably be fine with that path. What happened to your weapon delivery cannon? Oh, I still have it. It's just that uh, the, uh, the amount of resources we have to pour into it and uh, how quickly it can clear out the biters versus the sheer volume of biters that we're up against for now. Um, it's going to not be that great against uh, biter expansion, basically. But it's definitely, you know, making a dent and softening up uh, a lot of this stuff, it's going to make it easier for the spiders to clear things out. So, when we've got this many biters to clear out, I think using both is the way to go. Uh, we need electric furnaces and chemical plants to make this work. Oh, and if we need... We need to step through every single tier of furnace to do that as well. Whoops. Probably by the time... I didn't even get to see it, but I was going to say the... Uh... The furnaces are going to get built so quickly that we get several of them, even though I'm requesting only one. Now, it seems to be just a matter of how quickly the bots can feed it. I suppose one way to get sort of a latch behavior is if we actually use slow inserters to take from these machines, uh, then we will overproduce compared to the target. Or we could have, in order to have it both ways, we could have like stack inserters so that we can rapidly take from here, but have them on a timer or something. But uh, just using yellow inserters to take from these machines is by far the simpler uh, version of this. Uh, yeah, we also wanted chemical plants because they are a prerequisite for a couple of things. Okay. Destination full. That's actually normal. I'm not used to seeing this anymore because I'm mostly not using vanilla trains. No path. Uh, what? Oh. Yeah, that was a mistake. Let's go fix it. Yeah, we can't have the train... We can't have a long train go straight back down this way. Um, because it... It's just not pointing that direction. So probably... A bit of rail, like... If I move this signal... No, 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 no. No. Um, could you please... Could, could you please perhaps not just yet? Okay. We have a bit of rail. Go down like this. 
Can't put any signals there, that's okay. We don't need this straight part anymore. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's fine. This way. And that way. Nice. Away you go. Fantastic. Okay. Although... I was going to say I'm surprised I saw two trains queued up to come and... Actually, considering the train limit is one, I am surprised to see two trains queued up to pick up blue circuits there. That does seem a little bit odd. Now then, do we have our stone brick yet? Why not? Because we are just now, in the next three or four seconds actually, launching our rocket. Fantastic. Accumulators are actually quarter full as well. And over here should see... you can actually see on the mini-map it looks like little vehicles. Uh, it's gonna pop in around here somewhere. There they go. Perfect. So how long does it actually take to load a train with these? I guess a bit longer than it takes to load this. What I meant to say is how long does it take to load up a train load here? And obviously it's going to take slightly longer than it would to put the stuff directly from the chests into the train. Uh, but yeah, that's fine. Everything hinges on stone bricks now. We asked for one stone furnace and we've got 16 here somehow. Um, that works, I suppose. Yeah, if it really comes down to it, we could deliberately limit how quickly we output finished products from these. Like, just pick... just turn the stack inserters on once a minute, or once every 30 seconds or something. Um, although for certain items that would make a lot more sense than with others. Anyway, I should probably maybe speed this up a bit by picking up A little bit of stone brick. And as for the accumulators, wow, they're here already. Wasn't expecting that. Uh, I don't think we even have a request for them just yet. We're gonna need more combinators for this. Accumulator. 2000. Fantastic. Stone brick. What are those bots doing? Fair enough. Okay. 
Not that we need to place any of this until we're ready to actually use this area. What's this train doing? It's trying to go to temporary stop and nowhere else? Passenger present. I must have put that there deliberately. Just to get it out of the way temporarily. Alright, may as well drop the rest of the scaffolding that we're carrying. Actually, wasn't the point to get some stone brick over here slightly faster than the rail network would deliver it? Oh, there's bots though. Maybe I should send the spiders back here and I'll just drop off the stone brick. Okay. And there goes our furnaces. See bot explosion. Let's check on Nervous Spiders are just arriving actually. Seems like none of them got lost. So, I think they'll be fine. Once they start zigzagging, or even just doing this corner here, they'll all catch up to each other pretty well. Right then. Uh, it is going to be a chore and a half, but I'm kind of looking forward to decommissioning this old stuff up here. Get everything operating a whole lot more smoothly and with less clutter. That reminds me, uh, the recycling area is actually getting pretty full. Oh wow, it's completely full of iron and copper. Um, not so much stone, I wonder why. I might even be able to run... Whatever we need stone for up here, I might just be able to run it off the scrap. Which means I need to... I need to figure out a way to... Probably all it takes is just to make the stone drop off for a rocket that's going to go back to Nalvis to be low priority. And whatever we need stone for up here will primarily be supplied by this, I think. Or we could... Hmm. If I, if I make a big storage, it really just sort of uh, shifts the problem a little bit. Yeah, I think, I think we'll just have a really low priority uh, rocket to send stone back to Nalvis. And we also need to not send stone up from Nalvis, unless we're like running low on it up here. And I'm not really sure how I want to go about that. If I were to have a block like this providing stone, and we had like trains pick stone up from here and drop it into this container, that would prevent the rockets from being sent up with the stone. Unless we actually run out. But yeah, I'm actually a little bit surprised. We are 
very, very full with the iron and copper up here. Uh, 57k plus each and a whole lot more scrap to get through. So we need to get to sending that back to Nalvis. Um... Probably good to put it close to the furnaces. I could put it here, or I could landfill this thing, and then it would be right next to the furnaces. I think I like that idea better. Let's get our construction spiders down here. I don't know exactly how much landfill they're carrying, but... This group is carrying a lot more, so just in case that's the wrong spider. These are the deconstruction slash landfill spiders. So we'll bring them down here. Landfill this whole thing. And over here as well. Probably don't need this bit. And once that's been filled out, we'll drop another rail block. Melt it and feed it into the bus? Oh, you mean like the uh, iron and copper? I suppose I could. I don't particularly want to throw away the productivity bonuses. I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure we get... Uh, on the other hand... Assuming we're doing well with resources, we will be getting rid of excess to keep the core mining going. But if we're not doing that, there's going to be a lot more demand for iron and copper down here to start with, and then we get the productivity bonuses. Which is definitely going to be worth it, especially with the large amount of cargo rocket sections and such that we get. Hey, we sent an entire cargo rocket full of flat solar panel tier 2. Uh, down to Nalvis. Nice. So how much have we got here? Oh, this should probably be... ...changed over. Actually, Nalvis Mall. I, th I need to double-check that I changed this thing. To never launch again. Okay, cool. Perfect. Uh, so, in that case, this should be flat solar panel tier 2. I'll get the bots to remove those tier 1 flat solar panels for now. There we go. And the next time we need to make an outpost, we're going to have doubly powerful uh, solar panels. Also, we can do this already. Although we don't have the tier 2 accumulators just yet. Fantastic. Okay. What else were we doing here? We still haven't gotten any electromagnetic facilities. Uh, we do have the accumulators. Good. And we got our stone brick. 
Uh, I wanted to manually craft a couple of cargo landing pads. Where's our steel? Seems we're running low. Relatively speaking. No, we've actually got quite a lot. Uh, five radars, you say. Might be better if I... No, I'm going to run out of inventory space if I do that. Just need to handcraft these and then I can queue up the cargo landing pad. I just want to get this set done and then we'll have the uh, automated system here make four at a time. Also, you can have these and these actually. That was quick. That's like uh, a third of our missing uh, that's almost half of our missing electromagnetic facilities built in that couple of seconds fantastic all right so 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 Cargo landing pad. Nice. And it seems like we've got our target for electromagnetic facilities. Although... I don't suppose I was requesting as many as I should? Wait, what? Oh, logistics were disabled. But also, I don't know if I had the spiders. Oh, the spiders are down there. I don't remember if I had the spiders requesting them. Electro... Magnetics facility. Yes, good. Uh, I guess I can probably turn this on now. And I'll go and place those uh, cargo landing pads. Just confirm that when I place them, they have the default name so we don't accidentally send things up. Okay, good. Fantastic. Seems like the spiders actually haven't received all of the scaffolding just yet. Uh, what else was I waiting on? Oh, that's right. I wanted to finish this build. That was a while ago. Let's see. And the entire reason that I had that whole massive diversion is I wanted to run rate calculator all of this as easily as possible. So I can check the th total throughput of all of the junk items. Okay, so we got 3.1 plus 0.69 plus less than half of one. Suffice to say, a single belt will be far more than enough uh, for all of the unwanted items to move through. It might actually 
be sort of cleaner to have this belt go over here. I guess. I could... Uh, with the way I've laid this out, I could probably turn around the junk output so that the desired items go south, the junk goes north, and then the junk meets up over here. Um, did it a little differently over here where we're just putting all the outputs on one belt. Yeah, I think maybe I kind of like that. I'll copy paste this somewhere else in case I change my mind. Uh, let's just put it here. I know that'll cause that system to build more of those things, but I do not mind at all. So... I'm just going to turn... All of this around. Um, the merger thing is going to have to be in a different spot. And then this doesn't look right anymore. That's fine. Uh, that definitely doesn't look right at the moment. This looks a little better. I don't know. Gonna need an underground belt or two over here. Alright. So what if... Junk go this way and have nowhere to go. Perfect. I could do an underground like this and then through here. It's only a little bit spaghetti like. This one. That's good enough. Although I don't like how these line up. How about... Is that actually five times? That looks a little bit better, I suppose. Okay. Get rid of this belt. That one definitely would have been an eyesore. Oh, that's why I was doing, um... Two rows of chests here. I was thinking I would have uh, these two merge and be loaded on one side and vice versa. Where are my belts? 
Hmm, I feel like... What would be the cleanest way to do this part? Up here, I think. So these are going to be on both sides of the belt. They definitely need to, like, merge together like this. That needs to be two tiles over here. I don't love the way that looks either. It's probably fine. Wait, why do we need a splitter here? We, we don't, actually. Uh, and just to double check the throughput from this. 3.12 and 3.9 per second for these products. So yeah, half a belt is more than enough. So then we do our balanced loader. And I think I've updated this so that it goes ahead of the stack size. Nope, I haven't. Uh, it's very important if we're going to do a precise loader, which we are here that we precisely load that we do it that we're strict with the balance loading into the chests first uh, after a lot of experimentation I came to the conclusion that the way we keep running into trouble with our loaders like this with the circuitry to make sure they don't stick out at the end is it's really pretty straightforward when you think about it uh, if you just have one stack inserter entering things from one chest into one cargo wagon, it's all pretty simple. Uh, if you have a single row going into a single cargo wagon, it's not too bad either. But the main problem here is... Um, if you have more than one cargo wagon, you can't check what's in the individual cargo wagons. Uh, so you have to make sure all of this is perfectly synchronized from beginning to end. To make sure that's the case, you have to be absolutely sure that none of these run out or run low or whatever on resources while they're swinging. Uh, if you can do that, it's actually not that difficult to make sure the precise loader always works. We used to have a lot of problems with these. Um, eventually, what it took to make them work was just bumping up the provide stack threshold a ridiculously large amount. Uh, it seems I also changed it so that the precision of these balanced loaders was strict as well. If you if you mess with this number a bit and allow each inserter to go a bit ahead of the average. Um, it'll speed things up, but there's kind of a runaway snowball effect where you can get significantly more, you, you do in fact end up getting significantly more in some chests than others. And eventually that will throw off a loading system like this. Uh, but fortunately, we eventually figured that out. So the first thing we do here is connect all of these inserters, set filters, set stack size S, gotta connect them all, 
and then one inserter per cargo wagon is going to be connected to uh, the green wire, like so. We're going to say, uh, we're actually going to treat this as 24 chests because we're only going to have two resources on each side. Like, effectively one resource on each side as far as this is concerned. Uh, so if we're less than 24 items that still need to be uh, put into the cargo wagons. We're just going to have a stack size of 1, which is the default if you have a absent control signal for the stack size. So we don't have to send an S for that one. We're just going to send a filter signal. Uh, if there's more than 24 items that still need to be put into this train, then we're going to get the remaining items that need to be put into the train divided by 24 as both filter and S for stack size and send that to every inserter on the red wire. Working backward from this conclusion, we need to use the logistic train stop output uh, to find out what the train is asking for. Minus whatever's already in the train. Uh, I'm just going to change that to a provider for now. Let's see, each times negative one. Output each. Uh, we also have... Let me see if I can find it. I think I have a blueprint somewhere now for that combination. Yeah, there it is, remove encoded. Um, I should probably turn this into this little circuit right here. Actually, maybe not. Each greater than zero output each input count. So we're going to pass everything through that isn't zero or negative. And we're going to feed it um, negative a million for all of these signals that are going to come from logistic train stop output that we don't want. Uh, in this case, I might just put it over here. Green wire connects to that. Red wire connects to that. And the result from all of this goes to our thing over here. How's things? I restarted my SpaceX run and I'm getting owned by biters. Ouch. Did you change the settings or anything? Or maybe just underestimate them or have a bad start? That goes there. That goes there. And I guess we're going to need to... I could put the circuits up this way. Except then the wires are going to cross the tracks. Well, some of them happen to cross the tracks anyway. So I guess it really doesn't make that much of a difference. Thank you for the follow, Pappy Redstone. 
Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Underestimated, but it took me a while to get gray science. Yeah, I do remember the start of SpaceX being surprisingly slow. Partly because of resource scarcity. Okay, that should be fine. Um, still gonna need a sub over here, I think. Something like that. Alright, so... Contents of the train times negative one. Stuff the train is asking for times one. I really don't like the way that crisscrosses across the train track. But what are you going to do? Anyway. Uh, we also need... Hmm, I didn't think of this, actually. I was going to just use a... Uh... I was going to use filter inserters with a balanced loader so that we have the same amount of item X or Y in each chest, but that doesn't actually, um, that doesn't actually deal with the problem of making sure we don't just fill up the chests with one resource or the other. And I don't know how I don't know how I can do that okay so what I what I know how to do to have limits on items up to five types of items in a chest we connect like so set filters blacklist and we put stuff in the chest. And it's only going to load up a little bit of each resource. Because once it's got something in here, it's sending a, it's setting the filter for that item as blacklist. So it's not going to pick anything else up. Uh, but since it ignores uh, zero or negatives... If we want it to pick up 10 extra construction bots, all we have to do is go negative 10. And we're done. What I don't know how to do, or if it's possible, is if I could somehow have half a chest available for each resource while also doing a balanced load. Uh, one way I could do it that is less circuit wizardry and more just pragmatic. It wouldn't have the fastest load time though, because it wouldn't be balanced across the individual chests. Although, considering the low throughput of the items that we're producing here, that's really not that big of an issue. Maybe we should just have four chests... Um, but yeah, if I were just to use splitters to send items to each cargo wagon, and then use this uh, for sharing chests, that would definitely get the job done. I wouldn't love the look of it or the relatively low capacity, but it would work. All we need to do, though, above and beyond what we normally do, is somehow make sure that this is getting a positive signal for something that has X items in it. It's not offset by... Oh, I think I have... 
Oh, oh, oh. If this... If I'm right about this, uh, I feel clever. Okay, so maybe. Maybe, maybe. If we just pretend there's only 12 chests. No, that... I don't think that works. Maybe it does, actually. I need something high volume. Actually, I would need like... Like three and a half train loads of something to test this idea. Unless I make a smaller version of this. Where, where's our spiders? Um, what do we have on hand? I have five stacks of productivity modules. So if we treat this as if it were three chests... And put two different kinds of module in here. What's it going to do? I don't think it's going to do what I hoped it would. Wait, maybe I'm actually supposed to pretend there's twice as many chests. Um, currently there's like... Two, let, let's stop this for a second. If there's 60 speed modules in here... That's interesting. Set filters blacklist, there's no blacklist, so it should probably be... Yeah, it should be double. Okay, let's try this again. I think just running the experiment is going to be more effective than me trying to simulate it in my brain. Okay, yeah, I should have realized that actually. Hmm. I think any number larger than the actual number of chests is going to have this effect. And we're not, there's not actually going to be a value that we could set this to so that it'll only fill it up so much. Uh, I could add a bit of circuitry so that... Okay, we've already got a green wire here that only touches the output of this arithmetic combinator and the filter inserters. We could just say... It's going to take like four combinators, I think, but we could check the contents of these chests and we say if... whatever these things are... If radiation data is greater than polarization data, output a large negative number, or no, a positive number actually. Actually, just positive one should do it. No, no, it won't because it has to offset this. Okay, so if we've got more of item A than item B, output a big positive number for item A so that it blacklists it across all of the inserters. So we'll have like like a balanced loader circuit that also only picks up whatever we've got less of. That that might actually work. I don't 
like how many combinators uh, this first iteration requires, but... Oh, we can cut it down by one combinator by just having both of these go into a single arithmetic, so that's something. Okay, so we're going to go each times a million, but each. And we're going to input these. And it's going to be... It was polarization data, wasn't it? If... Polarization data is greater than radiation data. Output one of something. Uh, if polarization data is greater, then we don't want to pick up polarization data. And if radiation data... I kind of don't like that. I want to swap them around instead. If radiation data is greater than polarization data, output radiation data. And that's it. That should do it. Um, obviously, we don't have those data as handy right now. So what I might do I don't want the spiders picking this stuff up. Uh, what I might do for the moment I've actually got more inserters on me. Let's do that. If blue inserter greater than green inserter, blue inserter, and vice versa. Oh. And then... Blue insert is here. So it is here. Just check these are all set filters blacklist. Oops. And go. This won't be enough to um to see it half fill the chests with each item or anything, but I think this will demonstrate it reasonably well. So there should be... Hmm, this one's not so even. But it's to be expected with the limited items. Yeah, so currently we're trying to pick up blue inserters. This one is more full than any of the others. So that one's not picking up. And the rest are... This should be negative 24. Yeah, there we go. Let's try that again. So we should see... Uh... An even distribution of each type of... Wait, what? No, 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 no. That's how that happened. There were some on the belt. And they weren't being picked up. Okay. Let's see how that goes. I like what I'm seeing. I'll wait till it picks up all of them and we'll see how evenly distributed they are. So we're not 
picking up. Yeah, okay, that's good. Six, six, seven, six, seven, six, 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 six. This is actually perfect. Or as close to perfect as it's going to get. Nice. I'm pretty happy with that. I'd love it if I didn't have to use this many combinators to do it, but it's really not that bad. I wonder if there's a way to make it generic. I don't think so. If some arbitrary item is greater than some other arbitrary item output... Hmm... If it was possible to do a max function in like one combinator, that would be very useful. Okay, so let's put these settings back here. And I guess we'll do the same thing, but with different resources on the other side. Uh, so, I'll just put that there for starters. And we'll obviously probably end up turning the belt around. Um, what are we going to be getting out of this? Conductivity data versus electromagnetic field data. Conduct. Versus electromagnetic field data, and then electromagnetic field data greater than conductivity data. Fantastic. Uh, it would be one tile outside of the substations, but then so are all these ones. So I'm not too worried about that. Okay, cool. Uh, so, scrap is already merged. We've already got it going onto its little sushi belt. Maybe this will look better. Nah. Actually, yes. Except maybe this one can move over a bit. That's fine, I suppose. Okay. So that just leaves... Wait. Oh, this doesn't go anywhere right now. Okay. And here. Just have this go over here. That's a little bit unfortunate. That looks very unfortunate. Yeah, no matter where I put it, it's not going to be natural looking, is it? that looks a bit more consistent. Alright, cool. That's all connected, I think. And... 
So this is going to be those four. Conductivity, electromagnetic, polarization, and radiation data pickup. Beautiful. Uh, provide stack threshold. Should definitely a bit be a little bit higher than normal because we're using the precise loading. Um, shouldn't have to set it that much higher, but the f further ahead of it you go, the, the more sure you can be. Okay. Let's drop some of these down here. And then... Are we actually almost finished with this build? Our tentative piping is looking a bit dodgy, but that's no big deal. Actually, let's do some long pipes over here. Uh, five, I guess? That's looking symmetrical. And then over here we need some 15s. Oops. That's actually almost perfect. That'll do. So just to double check. Uh, 25 degree thermofluid goes down here, which is going to be picked up by fluid train as a very high priority. Oh, I also need to set a request, uh, sorry, a provide threshold. Not stack size based. Let's just make it like 50k. Um, we can maybe change that later, but if we're desperately trying to make sure this stays sufficiently empty. Uh, on the other hand, we could always just add more storage here. Yeah, I, I like that, actually. Request thresh. wait, what? Request threshold 100k. Or 120 stacks. Whichever's smaller. Um, and wherever would be the most most goodest looking spot to put in some storage. I'm thinking up here actually. Since it already connects with this and it's going to be... We could just make it symmetrical with... Um, with this thing down here. And while we're at it, I suppose... We could do this. Please tell me that... No... Uh, okay, how about this? That seems fine. So now we've got room for 400,000 plus uh, fluid storage here, and our request threshold is 100k. Cool. 
I think that might actually be everything. We set up a sort of lazy loader here whereby the way we're going to make sure the inserters don't stick out at the end is we're not going to pick up, we're not going to load a full train. This is just for scrap items. Wait, what happens if... No, I was going to say, what happens if we end up with a full train of some type of scrap item, but considering the fastest of these is 3.12 per second, that probably shouldn't happen. Uh, if it does, we'll see. Now then. Unless I am missing something. Uh, oh. I, I am missing something, but not the kind of detail I was thinking of. Just tell LTN what's in these chests. Oh. Um, I think we're going to need a couple of combinators to act as one-way wire here. Uh, unless we wanted to go ahead and swap the wire colors on one half of this. Because we need the contents of these chests plus the contents of these chests. Which is going to throw off these um, each divided by negative 24 output each. If we do swap the colors of the wires on this side, we can just have green wire from here go here, red wire from here go here. We don't need any more combinators. The precise loader bit here doesn't touch any of those wires. I think that is actually the way to go. And it does remind me of something I occasionally find myself wishing for, which is... Uh... More wire colors. Even a single extra wire color would go a really long way... Uh, to being able to do more with less sometimes. You know what, it might be easier if I just delete these. Not this part, though. Um, so that's going to be red wire. Just in keeping with the theme, I'll make this red wire. Bonus points, we made it look slightly neater. And it's sort of symmetrical on this other side. That's nice. Okay. So, contents of chest on red wire. Of all of the chests, that is. Uh, contents of local chest or inserter on green wire. Set filters blacklist. Copy paste that across. Whoops. Connect all of the filter inserters to each other and this output here by red wire. And that's it. It looks a bit weird to me, because it's like the inverse of what I'm used to, but uh, that just allowed us to separate those signals with no additional combinators. Fantastic. Alright. Um, I 
think all that's left to do, unless, except for like tiny little things I might have missed, uh, is it looks like I've already done some of it actually. We're requesting blank data cards, which we don't have yet. Uranium, check. Multispectral mirrors. Not check? Because it's a long train? Actually, a short train should have brought them. Is this not connected? It is connected. It is switched on. Multispectral mirrors. Negative 2k. Stacks to 50, I believe. It does. Also, what are you doing here? How did you get... What? What? How... What? How? How does... Okay. Multiple questions. How does Scrap Train have one cargo wagon full of iridium plate? Um... Why is LDS Train with Train Limit 1 quest for 9k 48 times 4 times 50. We can fit 9,600 here. Uh, request stack threshold is 4 cargo wagons. And we're only requesting 9k. But somehow... Somehow we're trying to put in, like, 16k. A C for cat. Thanks for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. How's your stream today? We are just once again scratching our heads at how exactly LTN has managed to do these things. Uh, for some reason, we have, just in one cargo wagon, a bunch of Iridium plate that presumably was there before we got to this station. But also, despite our tiny request for low-density structures, we seem to be trying to... Well, let's, let's actually see how much... Ignoring what's on the belts... How much LDS was already in here? Uh, 9.6 thousand plus what's in the train, 8 thousand. And we're only requesting 9 thousand with a stack threshold, with a request threshold of a full train. That absolutely should not be happening. Went well, the belts are painful. The belts. Oh, those belts. Yes, indeed. Um. Yeah, I really don't know how. I mean, I've seen. I've seen that sort of behavior occasionally, and it's frustrating and whatever, but. How we got a single cargo wagon full of iridium plate. Uh, I should have checked where it picked up the plate from. It's like a, it's like a long train picked up from what was supposed to be a small cargo wagon pickup, maybe? A small train pickup, that is. This isn't going to keep producing because there's no room for scrap. And then you're going to be in the way of this train trying to leave, aren't you? Okay. Couldn't you... Apparently not. I might not have signaled this. No, I did. You should be able to... leave through here. 
Yeah, this train absolutely should be able to leave by going south, but it doesn't seem to want to, and also I can't even tell it to go that way with a temporary stop, although that might just be a quirk of how you issue temporary stops. Hmm. Uh, well, before we let that diversion confuse us, um, I really don't know why we're not getting multi-spectral mirrors delivered here. Uh, we're asking for 2k, which is one cargo wagon. The pickup is more than 2k per chest. Minimum, provide stack threshold one, minimum train length three, max three, minimum train length three. Uh, let's not limit trains to four after the issues we had with that other block. Um, but yeah, I really don't know why we haven't had multi-spectral mirrors delivered here. Maybe it's like the wrong... There's only one icon to choose from here. Oh, I think I know, because the request stack threshold is 160. Hmm. I can't make an exception for one resource. Hey, Veldek. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, okay, if this... If the request stack threshold has to be 160, then we really can only send long trains here, which means I need a long train pickup for the multi-spectral mirrors, which... Oh, you are leaving through that direction now. What changed your mind? That's weird. Uh, so now it's going to empty this into so-called trash pickup. And we're going to have a vanilla train move it back to here. I haven't implemented it yet, but I also came up with a pickup station whereby if we end up with too much of some item... Why do we have 15,000 LDS here, speaking of which? Uh, if we end up with too much of a certain item in this block, I can get the logistic bots. I, I can have the logistic network provide stuff to LTN and load a four cargo wagon train um, without any mistakes. Or by mistakes, I really just mean the insert is sticking out at the end, which messes up the next Remind train. Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. Indeed. The West dude, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Everything good again? Uh, yes and no. We've had some bandwidth issues. Uh, so I dropped the, the frame rate a little bit, unfortunately. Um... Also, my good monitor is dead, so I'm going to have to get that replaced. Currently having to alt-tab to check on chat, so sorry if I'm a little slower than usual. Um, yeah, let's go pay a visit to... Well, I guess what I should do right now is what I was just talking about, actually. Um, I'll just do it down here f for now. Maybe not. No, this will be fine. So this will just be to offer things back to the rail network. If for some reason we end up with way too much of it. And it's not the kind of thing we usually uh, spend ourselves. 
So we're going to put a logistic train stop here. We're going to put requester chests. Like, is that not? It is. Like here. Uh, we're going to need another RoboPort. Or several, actually. We're not going to touch any other networks here. No good. Um, let's see. I don't think... Wait, did I put this on Nalvis already? I don't know if I saved it. No, this is definitely not it. This is the broken one. Okay. So what we're going to do is... Get what the train wants to pick up. Uh, we are going to subtract from that what's already in the train. H times negative 1. Output H. Uh, except I kind of want... No, this should be fine, actually. Okay, for starters, we're just going to do the precise loader, um, but also uh, we're going to take away anything we're not requesting here right now. We'll keep it handy just in case, uh, uh, just in case it is desired by a train again soon. But this chest has to be emptied. I'll do maybe green wire connecting these. Set requests. I'm sort of going from memory here and I'm sort of making it up as I go uh, because I've only built this circuit once. Okay, I'll, I'll remove this clutter for the moment. Um, it's just going to be confusing in the short term. Uh, what we're going to have here is... Set filters blacklist. Uh, this will be for big trains, so it's only one item at a time. Set requests here, so anything that is not being requested to be put in this chest, we're putting it back in the network. And uh, this will be obviously to put things in the train. For that, we need a precise loader. I think. Uh, probably all we need is a couple of. Yeah, we can probably just go divided by four. I'll put each. I'll put S for stack size. Uh, the way I did it before was a bit different. I just arbitrarily said if we're below like 200 items to go, then drop the stack size to one, but that's really not necessary. Oops. So we're going to say set filters, set stack size S. Um, each divided by 4 S, each over 4 each. Uh, because we're doing that S calculation, uh, 
we will need to get rid of the extra signals from here if I do it this way. Um, are there advantages to the other way that I did it? I didn't have to get rid of the extra signals for one thing. I just said if anything greater than... If anything greater than some number output 1s multiplied by some number. So we had a stack size that was either full or 1. That actually added a couple of combinators that were needed, I think, so it balances out. Um, so... We also need... Oh, I didn't update this blueprint either. Let's do it now. LTN, remove encoded. Combinator goes here. And I think I'd usually use a red wire for this, I don't know. Each greater than zero output each input count. Negative a million on all of these. And... Select new contents. There we go. Okay, so we're going to... Uh, I'll use a green wire for that, actually. Oops, that's the movie. That red wire is going to go there. And all I'm going to add that's going to make this work without strange things happening uh, with the loading is we're going to add a timer. So we're going to offer everything in the logistic network uh, to this train station. We're going to use standard pickup. Turn it off for now. Long trains only, provide stack threshold. Instead of a full train load, we're going to make it like more than two train loads. So we're only, let's make it like 400. So we're only, uh, if we've got two and a half train loads of something here that the train network wants, we've got a bit too much of it. Put it back into the network. Uh, and we'll also make it a very high priority to pick up. Say 100. And that should basically do it. Uh, and then it's a little bit arbitrary, but read stopped train T. Uh, if T is greater than one or oh, zero, output T1. We're going to use that for a timer. Normally you have a constant combinator pointing at a long one for a timer, but this is going to act like the constant combinator. Uh, so, if t is greater than 0, output 1t. Uh, if... No, I think I need to stop the timer when the train leaves. Wait, yeah, no, that's going to work already. If train output 1t, and then we've got a timer here. If t is greater than 0, output t, input count. Um, except that's never going to reset, is it? I might ha yeah, yeah, I think I have to change it to a different signal. Let's use dot. Uh, so if t greater than zero output 
dot input count. Um, I guess this could actually be a constant combinator. I might have to use different colored wire so that doesn't cross. So some number of t comes from this. That means we have a train. If train is greater than zero, uh, output dot input count, and constantly give it one dot per tick. So now we have a timer. And then we need to say uh, if let's move this. Kind of wish this was red, actually, and this would be green just because of the side. But it's fine. We'll do a little crisscross. Uh, if t is greater than thirty six hundred which is one minute, 60, well, not right now, but 60 ticks per second normally. Output everything input count, and that everything would be coming from here, and then, then we send it to here and do our precise loader thing. I hope. Train out of fuel? This is true. Where is it? Oh, it's on a different surface. It's on Nalvis. It's the artillery train. How did this happen? Um... How did this happen? Where are you trying to go? Back to here. We have nuclear fuel. And nuclear fuel. Um, what about the other one? Nuclear fuel and nuclear fuel. Um, okay. Does anyone have a single clue as to how this train ran out of fuel? With presumably three or more like four stacks of nuclear fuel in it? That is really bizarre. And I don't know how I can fix it from here. Um, there's also a train trying to come here with repair packs and ammo. Uh, this place can probably hold out for quite a while, but still. That is a little bit concerning. How did this train run out of ammo? I have absolutely no idea. It's not like even if I could get it to go this way, it I could get it to turn around or something. We don't have any fuel up here, and even if we did... Okay, I may have an idea. I just might. I'm going to send you to the drop-off. Are you going to move? You're not going to move. Destination full. Um, I beg to differ, because you're trying to go there, okay, fair enough. How about you just go, um, how about this, go here, now you can go home, 
now this train, if it will allow it to move, yes, is going to go to the artillery shell drop-off. It's not going to be able to turn around. I'll put request to... Uh... Okay, we'll put another robopod over here. Request chests go here. Inserters go here. And we're going to add a request for... Actually, I don't even know if I can get... Um... I think we've got small trains carting nuclear fuel around. Let's see. Oh yeah, it's only small trains. Perfect. Okay. So, I don't think I even need to... It's trying to leave, but it can't. I don't think while it's trying to move this will refuel it. I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, what's, what's going on here now? Oh, don't tell me, the signaling doesn't even... Don't tell me this entire place is one sector, it is. Okay, uh, how about this? We're gonna need to get some construction spiders over here. completely forgot that I had them down here. Let's at least get them to place this stuff. Since they're already sitting in position. And why not explode those cliffs? Okay. Where's the leader? There you are. I can't not get them to finish this last little bit. Also, where did I park the military? I think they're at home. Yeah, they're fine. Not too worried about that for the moment. All right, let's send our construction spiders all the way over here just to place a few signals and that will allow short trains to come here. Uh, once these two have done their deliveries, we should get a request for nuclear fuel to be brought into this robo network. Uh, once that happens, Once that happens, that should be enough. Uh, at the very least, when I come back here, I should be able to just tell this train, go to drop off. Um, that's weird, it's not doing the inactivity. You know what, I'll just put it on manual. Yeah, if we come back here in a while, hopefully that should be ready to be resolved. Back to orbit. Is the Voxifal. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay. Uh, let's... That goes there, actually. Have I set this up properly yet? I need to actually kind of sort of test it. Um, set filters blacklist. Okay. Uh, let's just say Robo Network Provider. 
turn this on. I don't think we actually have 400 stacks of anything, though. Uh, let's see. For some reason, we've now got 19,000 uh, LDS here. I'm pretty sure we're requesting like 2,000. Yep. Okay, so... Uh, that is... That is actually 380, uh, stacks. Let's set this to 300, just so we can test it. So, just to review, and to hopefully see if we catch any mistakes. Uh, we're getting what the train is asking for, minus what is in the train. Uh, remove these signals, and then go to here, and this is, if a minute has passed since the train got here, we should have these chests loaded properly by then. Oh, it would help if we connected that. Yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's do that. Um, so, if a minute has passed, that won't work, because we need the bots to be loading this from the beginning. Um, I think this will do, actually. Yeah, so right from the beginning, what the train is asking for gets sent to set requests. After one minute of the train being here. Uh, read stopped train T. If T is greater than zero, output dot input count on the memory cell. Uh, we're always outputting one dot from here. If it's been... If there's a train here, start the timer. If the timer is greater than one minute, pass everything through. Each over four, output each. Each over four, output S for stack size. I suppose it is possible that... Hmm. We're not going to get, like, the train ID messing with the stack size, are we? I think... I need to read up on this, but I don't know if each actually uses signals like S or T. Uh, why don't we try this? Well, no, it would... Would it not? Each divided by four output each. Also, I'm surprised we don't have a train coming yet. Uh, let's say T32. That does output T8. What happens if we've got like train number 32 and it's asking for 8,000 low density structures. Each over 4, output S for stack size. S 2K. Doesn't seem like T factors into that one. It does if it's the only thing, though. 200. 232 over 4 is, what, 58. That's interesting. I didn't even realize you could do that. In that case, we might have to go with what I was thinking of earlier, whereby we just arbitrarily have a stack size of 1 or the maximum. Um, so, we'll say if anything greater than 
40 would be cutting it really close. Let's just say 100. If anything greater than 100, output S times 10, or times 12, actually. Let's move all of this over a little bit. Uh, S times 12. That gives us our maximum stack size. Uh, so we're going to connect that to there. We're always going to output this directly. We're just sometimes going to add a stack size to it. That looks a bit weird. So I'll put everything input count. If anything greater than a hundred, won't that include the T signal? So I need like a, I think I need to do the same thing here, but remove T. Except I don't remember having to do this twice when I built this circuit before. Yeah, not too bad, Zavoxifor, not too bad. All things considered. I am in one piece. I hardly lost any uh, equipment or anything with the flooding. Well, I do have to get a new monitor, but it could be worse. Um, why don't I pass... Why don't I have this part as, like... Get rid of T. And we'll just have to change the order here a bit. Yeah, I think that's that's the way to do it. Um, Picker dollies makes this so much easier. Delete that for the moment. Uh, if T is greater than 3.6k, output everything input count. Just make it so that this stuff has to pass through there. So we've got what the train is asking for. No, that doesn't work, because we need to set the request straight away. Oh, we could just connect that directly here. That's probably fine. Actually, a green wire would have made more sense for this part. Um... And I may be... Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. Indeed. That's still symmetrical, right? Thinking you have all the time in the world to beat the mud pack is extreme overconfidence? Uh... Okay. Fair enough. So we're going to set requests to what the train is asking for immediately. Uh, we're going to set filters blacklist. So once we're not requesting items in here, we're going to get rid of them. I can add some inserters and chests to be a little bit more clever with that here, but for now we'll keep this uncluttered until we solve this. Um, 
Oh, I think I made a blueprint of this now that I think about it. Uh, I don't remember where I put it. I really don't remember where I put it, actually. Could it be this thing? It definitely is. And now that I think about it, I put it on the Discord as well. <laughs> Alright, let's see how close I am. Um, so... Whatever the, whatever the train is asking for, we immediately set requests. Uh, we send all of that to all of these signals here, but we only allow it to pass through after the train has been here for a minute. T greater than zero. Oh yeah, that's right. Um... So once a minute has passed, we, we're getting what's already in the train subtracted here, plus what the train is asking for. We are, we're removing all of these signals, including T, and then since we are removing T, we don't have to worry about that anymore. We can just do the divided by number of chests and setting stack size stuff that we're used to. Not likely to make a mistake on that one. And that should be it? Question mark? Now what I don't understand is uh, why we haven't had oh we probably probably just haven't had a request for, uh, for low density structures yet, that's why. If I were to hypothetically um, go and steal these LDS. Use the spiders to do that. And as soon as it's empty, we'll just use undo. I hope there's enough space in the spiders. I should be. Or this could happen. Well, the important thing is we got rid of those chests. And there should be a train trying to deliver them now. Fantastic. Let's see how we did. So we're requesting 8k LDS in each of these chests. That's obviously overkill and I don't care. Uh, we're up to 400 ticks, 500 ticks once it reaches 3600. It's going to pass everything through here including the 8k LDS, remove all of these signals, and then we should start loading. Fantastic. Schnell, schnell. Fair enough. Mach schnell bitte. Alright. 1.6k. Uh, we've already got... Oh, we need like 40 stacks in each of these. Oh no, I didn't put enough RoboPorts. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Um... We just need none of these chests to run out while the inserters are doing their thing, because they all need to... They all need to work in sync for the precise load to work. 2.9k, 3k, once it hits 3.6 we're gonna start loading. I think we're gonna make it. Yeah, we're definitely gonna be fine. Uh, one minute was actually pretty accurate. 
And... Nothing? If T is greater than 3.6k, output everything input count. It is receiving 8k LDS as a signal. It's not outputting anything. If T is greater than 3.6k, output everything input count. Why isn't it outputting? Am I... am I blind? Maybe I... No, 3600. 5.3k. Output everything input count. Is this combinator misbehaving? There's no T input signal. That's a good point, actually. Yeah, that's 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 a very good point. Okay. Um can we perhaps Oh, it's supposed to be dot. Uh Well, here goes. I knew that. So you can see here the LDS number going down. That's the amount that we're still trying to load. Obvious flaw with this design is the bots are still trying to cram LDS into uh, the requester chests. But that doesn't really matter that much. It's very trivial compared to getting this thing to work consistently. Uh, stack size is 3.4k still. It should be exactly the amount that remains to be put in each of these cargo wagons. And yeah, I think it's working. As long as these chests have plenty of LDS in them, uh, as long as these inserters stay in perfect sync, it doesn't matter that we don't know what's in each cargo wagon exactly, uh, because we can infer that they're all equal. And once we are finished loading, we should have zero inserters sticking out at the end, which means a train can come along later and load something different without getting messed up. Uh, the stack inserters here will throw the LDS into these uh, active provider chests after that. However, uh, while we're here, one thing we may as well do is uh, set filters whitelist. On these. So there's going to be a bunch of stuff in here left over from previous trains available for the logistic network. If it gets really full, some of it'll get put into storage. Uh, and that's basically that. And here we have zero inserters sticking out at the end. Fantastic. Uh, it was it's obviously a bit of a mess, and I made a couple of mistakes along the way, but I'm fairly happy that I was able to recreate that from memory. This being only the second time that I've built this circuit. Uh, so what did I change this over to? 300. I think that's actually pretty reasonable, especially considering we're only requesting uh, 40 stacks of each of these things. If we end up with 300 in here, it's about time to get rid of them, I think. 
Speaking of get rid of them, let's bring our spiders back to the logistic network so that they can not have their bots trailing behind them with a million LDS. Fantastic. I'll just double check. Uh, I'm pretty sure they've got it set up so that... Yes, okay, cool. LTS is in the trash slots. It's a white dot instead, indeed. Bought it in one. Thanks, Morpheus. Also, good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. What are we missing here? Um, if anything... A lamp. When I accidentally put a ghost there, it actually did do that. Somehow. Alright, this is obviously looking a little bit messy. Let's tidy that up a bit, shall we? this down a little bit. There's no proper middle there, but it'll be fine, probably. Do we still reach if I do this? Yes, good. Cool. Wait a sec. I should probably have removed the dot from here as well. Although it did seem to work perfectly without doing that. Um, it might have been a coincidence. Okay, cool. And we've already got enough LDS sitting here for the next train as well. If it is indeed looking for LDS next time. Oh, we've finished making everything. Nice. Uh, why don't we make a few more? I like how it immediately starts working on this prerequisite while it's doing the uh, cargo landing pads. It's kind of neat. Alright then. Uh, what's next? I guess while I'm thinking about that, I'll send the spiders down this way. Uh, let's check on Nalvis, and why do we not have nuclear fuel here? We do have nuclear fuel on the way, it looks like. I think I saw a train was leaving. No. This one's loading up ammo, waiting for its turn to come here. Uh, this one is... It looks like it's stuck in traffic, but... Oh, it is stuck in traffic. What? What? No. I thought I told this one to go home. It probably did go home and got scheduled to come back here. So, bring it over this way. Now it can turn around and go home. And the small train can get out of the way. I was thinking for a second that I was actually wrong about how uh, this signal... Uh, this signal here works. You'll note they're all chain signals. Uh, something I stumbled on not too long ago. Uh, if a chain signal goes into a dead end, it basically just acts like a normal signal. And we should see that being demonstrated right now. 
Fantastic. And finally, there's our nuclear fuel. And you can go home. At last. Alright. I don't... I, I still have absolutely no idea how, despite a complete abundance of nuclear fuel um, and we do have the logistics to bring it to these trains uh, I, I still have no idea how that train managed to run out just on the front locomotive perhaps Wait, I want to see this. Full cargo inventory. Oh. Maybe its inventory was full and it immediately went to go to drop off without stopping to refuel. No? Oh, it's stopping this time because traffic, I think. Um, yeah, maybe because its inventory was already full, it never actually stopped somehow. It's been going around in circles. Although I thought... I had set up all of these stations... Uh... If artillery shell smaller than zero, artillery shell one. I don't know why we need a constant combinator here. I mean, we can easily change how much we're requesting, but we could just do that with a constant anyway. But still, I thought I had all of these stations set up with train limit of zero unless we need more shells. Um, that does seem to be the way these are all set up. Oh, this is a... This is a small train. Delivering more nuclear fuel. I was trying to click on this. So you are trying to go up here. We've got... Wait a second. I think I know the answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is supposed to be connected to the robo network. Um... That would help. Let's just do a red wire here just to be sure we're not messing anything up. So now we're not requesting a train. Probably that one lack of a wire. Yeah, because this is why we need the negative 100 and say well, I guess we don't need the negative 100. We could still just say if artillery shell less than 100. Uh, but yeah, I forgot to connect it to the robo port. And we don't have a condition here whereby it says like five seconds of inactivity as well. Um... I think I will... I think I will add that condition to both of the trains just in case I make a mistake like that in future. That way, even if they do end up going around in circles forever, they'll at least not run out of fuel. Alright, cool. 
What's next? We've got accumulators and bricks. We've got a couple of free slots here. I think I'll have these two blocks. Uh, I think I'll put some more landing pads down here, actually. Let's bring you back for more scaffolding. Uh, and before we got distracted by this weirdness, which I never actually found a solution for, uh, for why the trains did that. Uh, how are we doing over here? We need multi-spectral mirrors in a four cargo wagon train. Which means... I guess it wouldn't be difficult, actually, to put that down here. Not even a little bit. It'll be a slight pain, but that's fine. I wonder if there's, like, a nice symmetrical way we can... Extract all of these multi-spectral mirrors. I don't think so. We could get it from the three of these, which is still going to be pretty fast. Yeah, I think... It, I, I'm still guessing from what I saw with FNEI that that's going to massively outpace what we need for the entire base, probably. And if it doesn't, we can always make some more locally. Okay. Let's go back over here then. And we'll drop some... Balanced Loader. I wonder if I could eyeball exactly where the... Oh, there we go. That was actually going to be my guess, believe it or not. I was like 25% leaning towards one tile further to the right there. Okay. So, I'll put this here. Uh, I don't think there's a good spot to output these. Not going to need this belt anymore. Although this one probably can stay. There's no way to thread this through here now. If I brought it this way... No, there's not actually a tile there. Even though it looks like it. I could put this here, which would give me room to do this, bring that through there. That's going to be ugly. Let's just keep this simple. And... This part's not going to be so tidy. Maybe this would be better. We could keep it symmetrical at least. Uh, that's not going to work. Which is a little bit of a shame, because that was a perfect fit by coincidence. Uh, 
I guess. Oh, that needs to be like... Yeah, no, that would need to be one tile further in, which it can't. I suppose it could look a bit cleaner if all of these go... No. No, it could not. All right, where are we going? Are these going to share different sides of the belt? Does it even matter? I think the total for this is going to be less than half a belt anyway. Uh, but that'll be on that side, and that'll be on the outside. That's actually both sides. I'm not too worried about this one. Spiders, I can't see. Oh, that's of course just barely going to be outside of the substation as well. I don't suppose I could move this over tile. This needs to go. And this needs to go. Uh, that one's also just barely out of range of the sub. Yeah, I never noticed these bits weren't symmetrical, actually. Could I maybe... bring those in one more tile? Or even two more? No, one more tile. And then that can go there. And then that can go there. And this will be in the substation. That can go there. This goes here. I guess this would be more consistent and neat looking. I suppose. Gonna need some substations in the usual spot. Gonna need to, if I can mouse over it properly. Copy the name of this station. This combinator won't be what we're looking for. Uh, I think I will make it so that trains of any size can pick up from here. Uh, you don't actually... it depends on the throughput, but you don't necessarily need a balanced loader if you do this. So... If we just make it so that we have to have 7 times 24... Uh, 6 is not good enough because it's not a full train load. 
So 7 times 24 stacks, 168. If we set the provide threshold to 128 and limit these chests to 7 each, we know that... We know that this is all balanced uh, when the train comes to pick it up. Obviously the downside of this, uh, the obvious downside of this is storage space, uh, but also if you, if you need to load this uh, at speed consistently, uh, you will actually get higher throughput overall if you use a balanced loader, because if you have a bunch of stack inserters right here, for example, the first three or four are going to take everything until their chest is full, and then they will stop working. Um, and then if it's, say, only six inserters, you're only going to have two or three, depending on where you're up to. Uh, you're eventually only going to have a few inserters working. So, oddly enough, uh, there is a case where a balanced loader will actually increase throughput. I was a little surprised to realize. It's a very not obvious moment to moment, but it is a overall in the long run type thing. Uh, of course, since our maximum rate of multispectral mirrors coming down this way is going to be 10 per second, uh, we really don't need to worry about that. Okay. Um, might be a little bit easier if I do it like this. some space. That's going to make it a little bit easier. Just a bit. I suppose in certain circumstances, because of what I just described, uh, slower inserters can effectively be faster than stack inserters in the long run. In that very specific use case. And I'm sure there's one or two others. Multispectral mirrors. I guess I'll just balance load over here now. And away they go. Now then, why aren't we producing more of them? Probably because we're not dealing with scrap. Uh, in fact, that is definitely why. Alright. So what are we going to do about all this scrap? I think for now I'm just going to send it back to Nalvis and... 
deal with it that way. Okay, so first thing is iron ore. Let's change the name of the station first. Oops. Um, iron ore. That's stone. Iron ore requester. Uh, make it a low priority, just in case there's anything else we want to do with iron up here. One cargo wagon full. And only long trains, that's fine. I think. Yeah, that should be fine. Uh, next is... I think I want copper here. Is there a bit of belt missing here? That's a bit odd. Uh, I think I want copper to be here. Should have set the filters as well. Apart from anything else, it makes it easy to see what this is for. Copper. And stone. Copper or requester. Uh, 25k. And same thing here, but stone. Now, I'm a little surprised we haven't seen a train come to deliver any of these yet. Uh, but first, let's Make sure these are all set to manual. Good. Meanwhile, on Nervous, we need to take our construction spiders and start building uh, the landing pads here. Where did that blueprint go for the landing pads? There we go. Obviously we won't be putting scaffolding or space rail here, but uh, everything else, it'll... Oh. It actually does let us put space rail, but obviously that's not going to be what we have handy. So let's delete that. I should just do a deconstruction planner. Space rail gun. Regular rail. You're up. Wait, what? That goes there, doesn't it? It's a little bit hard to see. And this one's a bit longer. And one more, I think. Uh, then we need to arrange cargo landing pads from somewhere. We might have automated them over here, even if it is a bit of a pain. Okay, great. We do have a single cargo landing pad, at least. Uh, so, that'll get done. 
sooner or later. Uh, what else we got going on? Looks like... Oh. Yeah, we've actually already got... Uh, a full train load of multispectral mirrors here. Which should mean that they're going to get delivered here. Although I do need to bump the request up to a full train load, I think. Uh, let's make it like a train load and a half. So, if I'm not mistaken, we should soon see a train scheduled to deliver some multispectral mirrors here. Don't actually remember where they go. Uh, only to here, I believe. And we also need blank data cards. That's Blank data cards and thermo fluids are like the main thing uh, that we haven't put in the rail network just yet. There goes our stone. Don't see any iron or copper yet, oddly enough, considering these are com completely full. Probably has something to do with the fact that I forgot to tell LTN what we've got here. And that after I went to the trouble of specifying iron and copper on these combinators because they were going to share a wire. Okay. Provide priority 100. Provide priority 100. Good. There we go. Now what about our mirrors? There they are. Fantastic. And it looks like the unloader circuit is working as well. Uh, I did forget to add some underground belts over here. Let's make sure that gets fixed. And back to the mall with you. And then... What else is missing from here? Two kinds of fluid. Negative 100 and... Uh, no, I think it's just negative 100. Oh, and uh, ion stream. Ion stream... Did I not connect the fluid pipes? Oh, I did. Here it is. Except that doesn't seem to go anywhere. That might have been copied from somewhere, like this thing. Yeah, I don't think I connected the pipes yet. Uh, but that's not that big a deal, considering we don't actually have uh, the pipes to go anywhere just yet. I mean, the fluids. Uh, so, where would be the most convenient place for some of these pipes to connect? This is negative 100. This is negative 100. It's all negative 100. It's just that this outputs the negative 10. And this one's ion stream. Okay. Um, I really haven't made it easy on myself to find a nice spot for the pipes. I suppose this will make as much sense as anywhere else. Uh, what's this? Nine. We can do with 
three threes for that to connect. We also need uh wait, is that it's this one, right? Yeah, that's plasma stream. Did I set the requests for plasma stream? I didn't decide which fluid was which yet. Oh I did. Cold thermo fluid. 120k. So this should have plasma stream. That's it's supposed to be ion stream, isn't it? Yep. 120k. Uh so I guess we'll do three times three. I don't love it. It'll work. Move this extra bit of piping. And this one. And connect all the cold thermo fluid up. I might move this splitter back a bit and have that pipe go over there. Yeah, that seems sensible. We also need... Oh. Well, that might work. That might actually work very well. This is already max length. Yeah, it is. So we can't have that go down there unless... It's going to be a bit weird. Or I could have it go around the side here, which I like a bit better. There's no middle to this part. Oh. Oh, that's good. I like that. Fantastic. Okay. Alright, another bit of underground here. Um, this might maybe have to change a little bit. Possibly. I think I'll make a little exception for this particular constant combinator. Actually, I think I like this a little bit better. Definitely. And that is just a little bit too short. And that just leaves bringing the negative 100 over here as well. Which... It's not going to go through there. Uh, and I kind of forgot to have it connect on this side. That's actually pretty clean. Underground pipe go burn. And yeah, that's not too bad, I suppose. The entire thing at maximum speed would only use uh, 65 cold thermo flow per second. 156 iron stream per second, so I don't think we're going to have any pipe issues there. Okay. Uh, I guess I'll send the spiders over that way again. So 
So now we've got... Oh, I forgot. I did make iron stream already. Fantastic. We do need stone here as well. Um, I wonder if I could do a... I mean, we've already got low priority here. I wonder if I could do better in terms of... only dumping the stone to this place if there's absolutely no other option. I think the priority system, though, already accomplishes that. We also need some belts over this way. Uh, bots, you are driving me crazy. Cool. So we've got all the physical inputs here. Everything except blank data cards here. Fluid here, no cold, no cold demo fluid here. Uh, let's get the spiders over this way. So that just leaves blank data cards and thermo fluids before before we're going to have all of the uh, cards. Or was it energy science? Yeah, energy science. Fantastic. We've actually got all of the sciences backed up here except for uh, astronomics still, which is still moving at an incredibly slow pace. What are we missing? Just cold thermofluid, as always. Okay. Uh, so. More copper. We're not in danger of any of these. Oh my goodness. Okay, except for stone, we're not in danger of any of these cargo rockets filling up anytime soon. Um, stone is a little bit full, though. But at least we've made room and got the scrap flowing again, the flat solar panels flowing again, and we've got our multi-spectral mirrors. What is going on here? Provide strike threshold 168. Train limit 1. There should be absolutely no way that we've got a train here just waiting and waiting and waiting to fill up. I am a little bit displeased with LTN lately. We've had it overfill a station, and we've had it arrive at a station before there's enough items. Provide stack threshold 168. Yeah, there should be no way. And it's got nothing to do with... I mean, even if it did, this is a request stack threshold of 160. So that should require a train load, which it is waiting for a train load. It's just coming here when there's only, uh, I don't know, 4,000 of them available or something. And I didn't think this would be an issue, so I actually have this set up so that it would be blocking this train. Anyway. Wait a sec. 8,000 mirrors. 8,000 mirrors. And we've got how much here? We're asking for 12k. And the 
we've got 7.7. So 12k and the request threshold is 8k, so it shouldn't be sending a train until we're down to 4k. Uh, so I don't know why it would be scheduling a train at this point. Also, we've actually reached the point where we're low on electricity up here. Uh, I wonder how we are going to deal with that. Let's go on a little solar panel placing rampage, shall we? Also, I don't need this many space manufactories at my inventory. Okay. Away we go. I didn't somehow feed LTN a signal that I've got, like, way more of these mirrors than I actually have, surely? Doesn't seem like it. Uh, that's probably enough. Some subs up this way. Probably stand to upgrade some of these as well. Flat solar panel comes this one. How much power do we need now? Hold on, why are we only at 2 point... Were we always at 2.5 gigawatts? I guess so. Uh... I feel like I should probably... make sure those tier 2 flat solar panels arrive here as well. Uh, what's a train load? 20 times 160. Uh, 320, 3200. I'll just rebalance this for a sec. Give me these ones. Probably get the spiders to carry some flats. Um, that would only be a hundred in one trip, though. I should really get some more spiders up here. How many... 1.3k, that's nowhere near train load. Let's just take as many as we can carry for now. Turn off personal logistics. Chuck them in the trash slots. Okay. And... I'm not about to make a rail block just to contain solar panels. 
Uh, I think I would rather just upgrade these ones for the moment. Did I do that upgrade plan? I did not. Alright. Away we go. Wait, how many was that? I should have checked. Uh, control C. 1k. And I've got like... A few hundred. Alright. What else is going on while we travel? So we need a whole extra gigawatt to keep up with this. Each solar panel is 3.7 megawatts. Wow. Although, since I'm upgrading, we already had half of that for each of these. Even so. Oh. I'm not going to have room in my inventory if I'm replacing these. Um, can I? Nope, too late. Uh, I guess I can do it like this. Could hand them over to the spiders. That doesn't quite work out the way I wanted. It's fine. What are we up to now? Whoa, we're already at 3.5 gigawatts. Wow, I did not think this would be resolved necessarily in one trip, let alone half a trip. Uh, that's... Flat solar panel tier 2 for you, I suppose. We're already producing like half a gigawatt excess. Well, that was easy to solve. And we're now up to more than a gigawatt to spare. I'll definitely dump the existing flat solar panels uh, into these machines here. Hold on, what's this trail? I think our bots are upset. But... They don't seem to want to... Okay, there we go. Okay. All good. Nice. Let's head back over here.
No. I don't want to put another substation there. Uh, I guess this looks okay. Right. So how is Nelvis doing? We're not seeing any weird traffic jams over here. Fantastic. Power switch is on. Seems like... Oh, we had a biter attack, that's why. That's fine. Oh, and we have another LDS train. Using the... Logistic network to LTN system. And I see... Oh, it's still loading. What are we up to? 1.4, 1.5. Half a minute has passed. And this chest is well and truly just about full enough to load the train already. Uh, seems like I did remove one too many robo-ports here earlier. So let's correct that. We do not want the bots hovering and not loading the chests while the train is... while we're running out of time for those inserters to stay in sync. Okay, uh, next, I think, can we get the logistic network to poke its head over this way without intersecting with this one? The answer is yes, fantastic. What about, that sticks out over the halfway point, nice. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is uh, request a chest. Flat solar panels. Um, and same thing over here. And I think you guys already dropped all of your flat solar panels. I shouldn't be requesting them anymore, but not good. I uh, should probably have a request for that here now. Fantastic. So the existing flat solar panels that we've already got up here are going to get recycled. Um, I should do something about moving all of these 7,000 flat solar panels over here somewhere. But I won't worry about it just yet. What's next? Yeah, I really don't understand why this train was summoned here. Wait, why does it have no temporary stops if this was brought here by LTN? There should be a temporary stop uh, before it goes to this station. Did it somehow, like, end up on a loop acting like a vanilla train? I'm just going to send it back to depot and put the f mirrors back in the mall.
I'm check. I should have checked. Yes. Exactly. We've actually finished crafting everything here as well. Oh, almost forgot the stuff that we want to do on Nalvis. Uh, do I have a request for... Let's see. I definitely want to change your request from flat solar panel uh, to flat solar panel tier 2. And... Copy this one across everywhere. Uh, but I also wanted to have... It'd be super overkill to have them all carry a single landing pad, but once you start making them different... I'll just have the leader request like four of them and then I'll change it back, maybe. Uh, so... Let's get you to go back to the local mall. Do we need anything from our landfill spiders here? I don't think so. Well, I could get them started landfilling this area. That would make a lot of sense. Wait, save the fishies. I didn't think there'd be fishies in this little pond. And get out of here, cliffs. Grab the fishies. Gonna need some more landfill. Thank you. Yeah, as if not save the fishies. Especially when we need them for... No, we don't need fishies for spider-trons, but... Uh... That's like biomass in space exploration, isn't it? Uh, let's drop a rail block here. And we can see more clearly where the landfill needs to go. I'm sure we'll need more of it than that, but that's a start. Construction spiders are probably resupplied. Let's bring them over this way. Uh, there might already be robots here. They are fantastic. I love this. And uh, we need to swap the space belts out for regular belts. Unfortunately, there's no... Uh, there's no using an upgrade planner for that. But... If we do it once, because we made the whole thing radi radially symmetrical, uh, we should be able to... Just copy-paste it. Whoops.
then. At least it should be pretty easy to see if we've missed any at the end of this. Is that really as close as we could get to the middle? I'm a little bit surprised by the placement of this. Okay. Uh, I think that's everything. And then we need to remove all the space belt. Oh, I guess we are allowed to place space belt on the ground, but I'm not going to go to the trouble of going to get it instead of just swapping this out. Space transport belt ghost is in the way. I, oh, there it is. Literally one tile. That should do it. Fantastic. Now, before we forget, let's make a blueprint. Actually, why don't I go... Here, create a copy and uh, select new contents. Don't need the tiles, do need the train stop names and entities, don't need that sticking out, that should be fine. Okay, now we can make the next one easily. And it seems like we've actually got everything set up here. Okay, so I guess the first thing I want to do is, if I put iron here, uh, that's actually super inconvenient. Oh no, wait, it can, oh, that would be the trash train. Yeah, I was thinking like straight through here, but no. I guess the shortest path for iron and Copper's over here, it's pretty similar. Uh, shortest path for iron would be this one, I think. Something like that. Uh, so, let's go iron ore, blacklist. This is iron. And this will be iron ore provider. Uh, it is okay if that goes straight to the trash. And I think I'll make this a high priority pickup. 
since the only reason we're getting iron ore from space, for now at least, uh, is because we have to get rid of it from the scrap. So, now this orbit... Wait, what? Uh, now this iron ore... There we go. And back in space. Wait. Why do we... That, that would probably be why. Let's get our spiders to pay iron a visit. Looks like copper's already full as well. Yes, it is. Okay, so... Uh, where's our target? Now this... Now this iron ore... Launch on cargo full. Fantastic. Next is copper. Uh, since copper is dropped off here, the train has to go in from that way. Uh, here makes as much sense as anywhere. Which is good, because I do like to have iron and then copper. We only need four inserters to fill the belt. Um, with a stack size of ten. If that's the case, I'll just trim it. Uh, let's see. Novice... Uh, and this will be... I'll actually just copy this for starters. Change this to copper ore. And I think that's pretty much that. Oh, wait, don't forget this one. Copper ore goes here if there's a crash. Um, cool. Oh. What's next? Stone. Uh, stone is dropped off here. So, pretty much the same deal as copper. I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference where we put it, but here is fine, I guess. Uh, so... Now this stone. And... And then? I don't actually have a... something I want to put here yet. Oh, right, I want to copy this, and just change that station name to stone, and that'll be that. Meanwhile, back in orbit, uh, target is Nervous Stone. Launch on cargo full, which is to say immediately. Nervous copper ore. Launch on cargo full. Nervous iron ore. Launch on cargo full. Fantastic. One thing I didn't foresee is exporting ludicrous amounts of iron and copper from orbit back to Narvis. Uh That is one particular logistic chain, if you like, that I didn't expect. Here comes our copper. Very nice. I 
I do see the third inserter doing its thing sometimes. In fact, there's a gap. Yeah, I think with a stack size of 10, this is actually uh, necessary. I forgot to task to ask important question. How far do spaceships? Uh, yes. The answer is yes. Let's drop some more of this. See where the scaffolding needs to. Not scaffolding. Um. Landfill needs to go. This is symmetrical, right? Oh, it doesn't include the landfill. Right. I'll just do it like this. Alright, that should get the job done. Now then, since we have scrap flowing again, or rather, it's all been completely processed for the moment. Uh, still got a lot of iron and copper here. And I need... It, it might be a while before it's full, but I need somewhere for that heavy... Oh my goodness. It is more full than I expected. We need somewhere for the heavy oil to go as well. Um, is that darker than the usual solar panel on the map? I don't think so, actually. Okay. Now, what was I doing? Well, I was making room. Oh, we don't actually have cargo rocket sections and space capsules. Uh, well, we do, but we don't. Every time a rocket comes up here, we get those, but we get less than... We get like 70% almost, I think, of the cargo rocket sections back. Uh, I don't know just how much that's going to work out to be. Like whether we need to produce them or rather send some of them up here. Especially when we've suddenly got a bunch of rockets that we need to send downstairs. So... A couple of these I haven't used yet. I could definitely just make one of them cargo rocket sections. I would make it a low priority pickup so that we always use the stuff that's been brought back here by the trash train first. So I guess there's really no harm in doing it. Um, yeah, I guess we'll do that next actually. Cargo rocket section. Now this orbit cargo rocket section. Surely we're not gonna have a 
cargo rocket just to send up space capsules, right? I mean, it will eventually be saturated, but that is a ludicrous amount of space capsules to send up in one go. Not to mention, filling up even a single rocket with these things is going to... It's probably going to make, as much as we've got lots and lots of resources now, and we are having to actively get rid of some things in order to keep the core mining flowing. Uh, although it only seems to be coal at the moment. How's our storage looking? Iron ore is completely full. Okay. That's not a site that I've seen in a very, very long time. If there is a time to set up a cargo rocket to launch space capsules, I think now is that time, actually. Uh, may as well do it right next to the... Cargo rocket sections. Go big or go home, I suppose. I would keep stock of X amount in space. Yes, indeed. Immo, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Yes is good. I was worried it's maybe. No, it's definitely yes. Okay. Now this orbit cargo rocket section. Now this orbit space capsule. I know I have a bunch of them way up here. Uh, in fact, we're sort of getting ready to send them back down the stairs. Um, but yeah, no, this will be fine. We can always sort that out. So, I'm sort of space capsule now. So let's set the filters. And this one's a blacklist. Uh, cargo rocket section. And this one is a blacklist. I would like to set the station name. Uh, and this is definitely below normal priority. Like, minimum priority. If there's anywhere else we can get cargo rocket sections, we want to get them from there. Same thing will apply to this one. Space capsule provider. Right priority negative one hundred. Okay. What's next? I think that's everything on this side. Let's have a look at Novus again. Uh, I was going to say, I think we have some... Thank you. Hey, Varisol. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I thought I had some cargo rocket silos available still, but, uh... Apparently, we're about to make some more of those. Uh, to be honest, I don't entirely feel like it at the moment, so maybe I will go and plunder those existing cargo rocket sections and stuff. We do have some room in the trunk over here, I think.
Actually, I could probably just... Well, I would have to set up something to steal them from here. But I could set requests for these things and just extend this bot network temporarily. I'd probably have some unforeseen consequences. Wrong one. Okay. Up we go. To the old rocket. I'm just glad T-Hex is back. Thank you. I'm glad too. Missed you guys. I missed the SpaceX run as well. I mean, naturally I could have played it offline, but... You know. That wouldn't be entirely fair, would it? Let's get the bots to place those few combinators that I forgot earlier. And there we go. I'm really liking the way this base is coming together. There's always, at, at every single point expanding this thing, there's like something that doesn't work without two or three new inputs or something like that. But uh, seeing it all reach this level of functionality and I've got them all, you know, this is where I keep coming back to almost always to resupply. Um, and everything's sort of starting to work. That feels nice. I'm fairly happy with this, uh, cargo landing pad into rail network build as well. And finally getting the, uh, logistic network to LTN, multiple cargo wagon loader, to be reliable. Um, suffice to say, that removes a few headaches. We're not going to get, you know, accidentally 250,000 solar panels uh, in a robo-network in future. Speaking of which, uh, I believe this is where I made that other blueprint. Uh, was it LTN? It's in here somewhere. Oh yeah, here it is. LTN. Roboport to LTN. Four cargo wagon. Precise loader. And I accidentally removed all those ports, didn't I? So this will this will offer anything that we've got. I don't know. Two and a half train loads of stuff uh, back into the rail network to help us drain out this old base. Cool. Uh, why don't we? I don't want the logistic bots to take the stuff that I'm trying to pick up, but. Oh, okay. Wait, am I in the loop? I am in the network right now. Um, how about... No. I don't want to have to... Hmm. I don't want to have to make too many trips. I don't want to have to change all the logistic network requests. The spiders are actually really full as well. Uh, okay. That's... Maybe it would be better to... I 
to just have the bots move things down here. As slow as it's going to be. They'll just get it done eventually. Actually, it probably won't take as long as I think because we're about to flood this robo network with new bots. This might be a terrible idea. Oh well. Now you need a mule, a mule spider? Yes, absolutely. Just have it follow me. Unfortunately, the jetpack, like, makes them lose track of you, but otherwise I would have a spider follow me everywhere. Why are you picking up only 118 iron plates? Well, it's a short trip anyway. Now then. Uh, since this trip is a bit long, let's check on Narvis. It almost feels strange how quick and easy it was to, uh, to set up these silos, but, I mean, that's blueprints for you. But I remember when cargo rockets, I mean, cargo rockets are a headache to deal with, to use all the time back and forth, but it's... Uh, as far away as anything else is, it's obviously worth the effort. Alright, we have a blueprint for these things, don't we? Space exploration... Yeah, here it is. Uh, I seem to recall making some improvements. I mean, for one thing, we can actually fit eight... Um... eight cargo rockets in this thing. We could probably fit nine or ten, but I don't know where the train drop-off would go exactly. That's the real bottleneck there. Um... So... I think I will try and update the, uh... The ground version. Do do I want to put this block anywhere in particular to minimize the train uh, the train distance? We do send rail. Oh, we already have rail up here, don't we? Somewhere. Yeah. What am I needing to send up here again? Let's see. Brain's getting a bit off. Uh, cargo rocket sections and space capsules. Okay, so the capsules are up here. Um, we're only picking it up with small trains. Which is fine. I guess, uh, I guess we really could squeeze in one more if one of them's going to only accept small trains. Um, but yeah, cargo rocket sections is the main thing that comes from here. We pick those up here, train goes this way. We also, I think sometime... Yeah, yeah, we're going to end up with cargo rocket sections coming back to this mall. We've already got a lot of them. So let's build it here. And there's going to be a very short trip for trains to pick up cargo rocket sections and bring them back this way. 
Um, I think to begin with, this is the kind of thing that would be a bit easier if I was there in person. I'm just trying to think which blueprint I want to start with in order to make the new improved version of this. It was really just a matter of... Well, we added a train station in there as well. I think it'll be easier to start from this one. Just gotta be careful. Uh, let's remove the space rail. Whichever entity it is. Rail goes this way. And this way. And also... Like this. Not like that. Let's just copy-paste this part until we get those done. I think that's all of them. Fantastic. Is that actually all of the rail? It might be. We need to replace all the space belt, of course. Let's get our construction spiders. Where did we even put them? Actually, over here. Managed to find the pixel for the leader. Uh, I do... I was gonna say I do want to remove the drop-offs here, but no, that'll be fine. As long as these are all set with no requests, which they are. Good. Fantastic. Or does this one request solar panels? It does. Alright, let's wait for the spiders to get there so we can change that until we're ready. Make a save just in case? Yeah, it seems like a good idea. Alright. Since when do our trash trains down here behave? I seem to remember having problems. That's not a bad flow of steel. Alright, here it comes. Switch off. There we go. Pretty sure the rest of these don't have requests. Nope, we're fine. And these ones do. And I'm okay with it. Oh. Uh, except we don't actually have short trains picking up cargo rocket sections uh, on the ground yet. I think with the ease at which we've kept up 
with producing the cargo rocket sections. It'll be fine to do it this way. Uh, it's 168, I believe. And we'll allow short trains to pick up from here. And that should be all it takes. Okay. What are we missing? Uh, cargo rocket silos, of course. I think it'll be a little bit easier for some of this build to just extend this robo network temporarily. As for the belts, um, I was going to say I have an idea, but I think there's going to be some downsides. If I were to take this blueprint and just take the belts out of it, as in only keep the belts, and then paste it in, uh, there might be more mistakes to correct than I would like. But uh, we can probably gain a few things out of it as well. Let's get some blue belt here. And here. There's no wiring connected to the belt, I don't think. No, we're good. Yeah, I could probably squeeze in... Well, that wouldn't be great with the substations, but otherwise I could probably but another uh, cargo rocket, uh, cargo rocket silo right about here. Possibly even direct insert. Mm, not quite. If I moved it over a tile, I could actually direct insert uh, the space capsules. But no, I think that'd look a bit messy. Uh, let's see. So I think what we're going to do is just... not limit cargo rocket sections for this one. And that way we don't actually need a... Well, I could do it for the one at the end, that then all of them can, can get the cargo rocket sections they need first. We could have this one just gobble up all of the cargo rocket sections. Um, and then these inserters can put in the space capsules. After this one, I suppose. So, I guess I would set this to 99 plus 500, 590, negative 599. And now that I think about it, well, no, that's, that's it. Except I need to make sure... 
Hmm. How do I make sure we don't fill the rocket until there's at least one space capsule? Well, exactly one, to be honest. Um, without adding more circuitry than I want to, is what I'm really trying to say. Signals that we get from these things. Uh... We know how full or empty it is. We know how many space capsules it has. Oh, I think it's actually really easy, possibly. Can't you use the upgrade tool for changing one type of belt to another? Unfortunately, no. Uh, Scrub Yeet, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, certain things in space exploration, like uh, rail to space rail, to and from space belt, unfortunately you can't use an upgrade planner for. Um, so this is... This green wire does actually connect to here. I can't set it to like... Well, for one thing it's a radio button, enable, disable, or set filters. So, I can't... I think I need another inserter to say... Uh, don't pick up the... I'm blanking on it. Uh, don't pick up the cargo rocket sections unless we've got... Unless we're ready to launch. That'll do. But I want to be clever and make it all work with one inserter. Hmm. I don't think there's a way to do it. Script thing? You can make a blueprint and run it through that. Uh... What do you mean? Also, I should... Wait, did I make a blueprint of this already? No, I need to... Okay, before I... Before I go and change things... Um... I need to make a blueprint that I can use... I need to update our blueprint, is what I'm trying to say. Although, now that I look at it, Considering the sheer number, it's actually like 800, isn't it? We need 800 cargo rocket sections in order to satisfy all of these rockets. Uh, that is... Uh... You're kidding. 160... 800 over 160. Okay, yeah, that makes more sense. Uh, that is five long trains or 20 short trains. Maybe... Maybe we should have the long train drop off for these things. Now it's going to be overriding things. What did we change? Let's just get rid of this belt. Oh no. And if this goes here... 
Where is that going? Oh, that's right. I remember. I was like, why did I do a 90 per second going into half a belt for this part? Um, but the rest is actually pretty sensible. I think it'll be easy to just do it again from scratch. This will actually already get brought back here. We don't need to worry about that. Okay. Blue belt. And... Blue belt. I think for this one, we'll probably do something like this. Fits pretty well, actually. Oh, that actually goes where I want. Not sure what... Oh, I see. Now that I know, actually, that bot attrition doesn't apply if you've only got 50 logistic bots in a given block, uh, the idea of making rail blocks that are... Okay, maybe exactly the size of one RoboPort network is a bit small. We could do RoboPorts like this so that nearby blocks won't touch each other. Uh, and as long as the throughput for something isn't that high, just using bots makes a whole lot of sense. Or even if it does, uh, even if it is that high, maybe it's just better for UPS anyway. Um, where do I want the... I could bring this through here, perhaps? Oh, that's actually a really good bit. Uh, add a splitter. Over here as well. That looks terrible. Um, can't move this down a tile, can I? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nope. All right. How about this? It'll have to do. Actually, this is somehow less terrible. It's a bit more consistent. Alright. What are these bots doing? Are they lost? Whoops. Let's get our wiring in order. Read belt contents hold. Cool. I get it, you're playing SE, no K2 involved. Does SE alone have better belts than blue ones? 
Uh, yes, but they are very far off. You do get a few... Uh... You do get a handful of, uh, I think it's yellow, maybe it's random, but they're all 64 items per second. The undergrounds are very, very long, uh, and they do work in space or on the ground. Max length 17, that is more than double the blue belt, the blue underground belt. Oh, I guess 9 means 8. So it's actually, yeah, it's double the blue belt distance. Yeah, uh, when you get to the to Nova's orbit and find the satellite, you get some of these for free. But it's going to be a very, very long time before you can uh, make those. Okay, uh, let's set the stack request threshold higher. Cargo rocket sections should. Uh, 200 actually makes a lot of sense. 2k is what? Um, 1600. Yeah, yeah, this is actually a bit more than a long train that we're requesting here. Okay, that's fine. All right. What are these bots doing? I don't... I don't understand why they're hovering indefinitely. Where are our construction spiders? Here we go. Oh, some of them have full inventories, that's probably why. Probably gonna see the logistic network bot... Uh, the logistic bots fly over to them right now and then... As soon as there's room in a certain spider's inventory, they might... Yep, there we go. Okay. Uh, don't forget to rejoin these. And... These. So that LTN knows what we've got. Fantastic. Uh, hmm. I do want this to be accessible to short trains, though. I think I'll make... I'll make it so that only long trains pick up from here, probably. But I want the short trains... Hmm. What's going on here? You're trying to pick up big electric motors. Okay. That's not worked out so well for you. I need to update this with my new logistic network to LTN loader. Uh, once I do that, this doesn't have to accept short trains, and we don't have to worry about this getting imbalanced. That should all be fine. Okay. Uh, but for now, it is about time to finish up for today. Let's see who is streaming the Factorio. These are for space only, right? Um, the space belts and the space rail do work on the ground, actually. Yeah, but there's no real reason to use them on the ground except for aesthetics or something. Thanks to the stream, no worries. Thanks for hanging out. Nice of you all to turn up again after I couldn't stream for a week. Mucky is streaming. Uh, let's see. Don't see... I hope I'm not missing anyone, but I... Yeah, 
yeah, I think we'll uh, raid Mucky today, and maybe tomorrow, a small stream. See you next time. Take care, Rosa. Thanks for dropping by. Thank you all for watching. Do take care, and I'll see you next time. Check out the Discord or the Blueprints if you're interested. If you have any questions or anything, by all means. And for now, uh, let's drop in on Mucky. <laughs>